Union offices of Fidelity Federal Savings and Loan Association. bring you in a few minutes is titled The Man Who Ran Away. The wish to run away is a common one. Usually it is an impulse not too hard to resist, but often it is a compulsion and there is no time to think what it is we are running away from and what it is we are running to. How dare you? How dare you enter this house? Why not? Two, two, three times. I could shoot you, you know. Please. And no one would blame me. You're trespassing. I know, And this is my house, and no one can come in here unless invited by me. But I... And I invite no one. Our mystery drama, The Man Who Ran Away was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Mercedes McCambridge. It is sponsored in part by Time Magazine and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It is not only children run away. Grown people do it too. With children, we're apt to call it an act of defiance. With a grown man, we're at a loss to say what it is. But I strongly suspect it is a cry of pain. Listen now to the story of David, the man who ran away. David, let me explain. Never mind, Mother. There are things you should know. I know enough. Where are you going? I have no idea. But we should talk about it. No, no, we shouldn't. Don't you want to hear what I have to say? You've said it all, Mona, my dear wife. You're taking the car. Yes, I am. But why are you doing this? Because I've got to get away. David, you can't. David, come back. Jack, Mona. Jack, I did something stupid. Yeah, what now? That watch I gave you for your birthday. I charged it. I meant to go in and pay the bill the next day, but I forgot. Yeah, so? The bill came today, and David saw it. Uh, uh, now he knows everything. You told him? What else could I do? How did he take it? He up and left. Took the car. What do you mean, left or where? I don't know. Did you ask him? He just said he had to get away. And when did all this happen? This morning. He'll be back. It's three o'clock and he isn't back yet. Hasn't phoned nothing. Well, don't worry. Just give him time. He'll be back. Anybody home? Is anybody home? What? What are you in? Uh, uh, is anybody in here? Anyone? Uh, oh, how dare you? How dare you enter this house? Well, I knocked. Two, three times. I could shoot you, you know. Please. You're you... trespassing. Please. My car is out of gas, and I wondered if this I might use... This is my house, and no one can come in here unless invited. By me. I know, but And you... I invite no one. I'm sorry. Hush. I, I, I didn't I mean be to... quiet. It, uh... It's just a horse. It's his horse. Oh, I can see it. Move away from that window. What? I... Don't stand in that window. Move away. Oh, all right. You might know, I think it was I standing there. Oh? On the other hand, 
No one could mistake you for me. No, not very likely. But he might think I'd invited you here. Well, I could explain He's very jealous, though he has no reason to be. But he loves me desperately. Well, I, I don't want to make any trouble for you. Oh, you won't. We all make our own trouble, don't you think? I... I don't know. I do. And that's the way it should be, huh? Come. Into the parlor. Why don't you? We'll have a little talk. But the man, the man on horseback... Don't he... worry about him. He'll be back tomorrow. In the morning. And again in the evening. Tomorrow. And the day after. And the day after that. And so on. Please. Come into the parlor. You will tell me your troubles. And I'll tell you mine. This is Mona, Jack. Oh, did you come home? No, and it's after 10 o'clock. Oh, give him time. How much time? Oh, look, he's probably out somewhere getting drunk. I doubt that. Or with some woman. Oh, no. You want to get in touch with the police? Oh, no. No, not that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's too soon. David would hate that. Well, hang in there. He'll come back. You'll see. <laughs> Everyone has troubles, you know. Little problems of one kind or another. I'm sure that's true. You haven't told me much about yours. Well, you haven't told me anything about yours. Oh, mine can wait. Now, you said you became upset. That was your word, wasn't it? Upset. And you ran away. You kept running, not knowing what you were running to. Not caring. Simply running away. From what? From something unpleasant. You're a grown man. How old are you? Thirty-six. Have you always run away from each unpleasantness, such as losing a job, being snubbed by a friend, reprimanded by a superior, things like that? No. Then this Unpleasantness was something more than unpleasant. Yes? Yes. It was something quite, quite, uh, dreadful. Am I right? Yes. Not a death, and not the death of someone you love? Not, not exactly. Ah, but I am getting warm. I, I don't know why we have to go into all this. Oh, but we do. It's very important. No. Not the death of someone you loved, but something like it, something close to it. Yes, I think so. All right, then. The beloved one did not die, no. But something did happen, something that distressed you terribly, made it impossible to... Go on living as before. Made it imperative for you to run away. Now, what could that be? Really, I don't... If she did not die, then perhaps her love died. Her love for you. I really don't want to talk oh, about my, it. I... What a sensitive nerve I've touched. Dear man, I'm so sorry for the pain you're feeling. So very sorry. I... I think I'd better leave. Thank you for everything. Don't so. This door... What about the door? It won't open. Of course it will open. Well, it... It's locked or something. Who ever heard of a door locked from the inside? Did you lock it? My dear man, I like your company. But not so much as to lock you in. Well, then, why won't the door open? Because you don't want it to open... But I do. Do you really? I'd like to leave, if you don't mind. I don't mind. But you... You only half-heartedly want to leave. The other half of your heart wants to stay. You know I'm right. So say it. Well, I... You may be right. No. I am right. Now, come back. 
and sit down and talk to me. I don't really feel like talking. Then let me talk. Huh? Her love for you died. Not little by little, for the shock wouldn't have been so great. Am I right so far? You're right about the shock. Then the love may have been dying for some time, but you only just now discovered the truth. Yes. I'm not so naive as to think you found them locked in an embrace in bed. No, nothing like that. I believe you found out in some foolish, fatuous way. It was something... something really inane that led to the truth, was it not? She gave him a watch. An expensive watch. Yes. And she charged it to my, uh... to our account. I saw the bill. Oh, how very idiotic of her. Is she... An idiot. No. Then she must be very inexperienced. I suppose. This is probably her first infidelity. Perhaps. Oh, certainly, without doubt. Well, that's very small comfort. Oh, my dear, I know. Believe me, I know. Because it is not the infidelity itself that plagues you, so. But it is. No. No, no. It's the shock of discovering that you are not all you thought you were. Not to her. Not to the one you entrusted with your pride, your confidence, your manhood. Oh, no. It is not the infidelity which matters. It is the question of self-respect. That's what does the damage. A little love affair on the side. What is that? It's a little love affair on the side. No more. But it has made you feel that for her, you were not enough. That you did not suffice to keep her happy and content. That she needed a little love affair. That is what hurts. Are you crying a little? I, uh... I guess I am. Well, good. It's only right and proper that you should. I'm sorry. If one does not weep for one's lost innocence, then for what should one weep? I... I didn't know that I was quite so innocent. No. You thought you were grown up and sophisticated and immune to shock. Well, we all think that until the blow falls. Now, what to do with you? You want me to leave? Not at all. I want you to stay. Let me give you some wine. Oh, no. No, thanks. No? Some men would run away into wine or whiskey. Oh, not me. I only get sleepy. I have some cocaine. Would you like some of that? Cocaine? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I don't use any kind of drug. I... <laughs> I don't even like to take aspirin. There are those who run away to drugs to help the pain. Well, I'm not one of them. So, what are we to do with you? Uh, I, I guess what I really want to do is to go to sleep. Aha, sleep. The safest place to run. Would you like to sleep here? There are plenty of beds. Well, if you... If you don't mind... Uh... Come, 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 come. I'll show you the way. You're very kind. I can be even kinder. Alone in a strange house with a woman... A little more than strange. Is this what our man has run away to? Is this the escape that he sought? Or merely the one he stumbled upon? Or is it the one he was inevitably drawn to? I'll be back shortly with Act Two.
week has passed since a desperate man stumbled upon, sought refuge in, or was inexorably drawn to a strange house many miles from his home. And in this house was a woman who, while she did not precisely welcome him, still urged him to stay, offering him every consolation, including herself. What's happening here? For the man on the horse. You were standing in the window. No, no, I wasn't. He saw you. No. Well, then why did he turn in and come up to the house? I don't know. I... I think he's leaving. Get away from the window. He can't see me. He isn't looking this way. He's never done that before. Actually come up to the house. Is that so terrible? He's supposed to wait for the signal. He rides past each day. In the morning and again just before it grows dark. Waiting for the signal that I have forgiven him. Who is he? He is my husband, of course. Who did you think he is? I didn't know. And when he sees me standing in the window... Dressed in my white muslin, the one with the lavender ribbons and the blue rose, then he will know that I have forgiven him, that he may enter this house, and I will be his again. I see. At least I think I... He's getting impatient, wouldn't you say? Else he'd never have turned in and come up so close to the house. Poor darling. I can't blame him. It's been a long time. How long can a man wait for his wife to forgive him? Forgive him for what? Oh, come now. You must know. For infidelity? Of course. Oh, I know it didn't mean anything to him, not really, but it did awful things to me. And that's why you understood me so well. People don't understand things they haven't experienced. They may try. They may pretend. They may sympathize and try to console, but they don't understand. How can they? You understood me so well. And I was right, wasn't I? That there was nothing for you to do but run away to escape. You were right. And I was right too, wasn't I? that the most delectable escape is in a strange bed. Wasn't I right about that? Come now. Admit it. I... You don't, don't think I'm speaking of love, do you? Oh, no, no, no. There's no love between you and me. There's not even affection. Although I'm sure you're a very nice man. No, no, no. There's nothing but a blind search for oblivion. Your search and mine. We are two aching, passionate people asking only to ease the ache and expend the passion in a wild and blind embrace. Oh, no. There's no love here. My love is with the man on the horse. Yours is with the woman you left back wherever you came from. No. No love. Love would only get in the way. Hello? Uh, is this the David Trent residence? Yes. Who is this? Is this the David Trent there? Um, no. Not right now. Uh, when do you expect him? I'm not sure. Who is this? Uh, am I speaking with Mrs. Trent? Yes. Do you okay. own a red sedan car, Mrs. Trent? License plate number XM458. Why, yes. Who is this, please? Ah, your car was stolen recently, is that right? Why do you say that? Well, because I saw it parked down the road from where I live, in front of an empty house. Where do you live? Outside the town of Marathon. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I never heard of it. Well, it's a very small town between Norbury and Carmack. I'm afraid I never heard of them either. Well, they're all very small towns, madam, you see, in the mountains. But if you want to reclaim your car, I can tell you how to get there. You say the car is parked in front of an empty house. Is it all right? I mean, th there wasn't an accident or anything. Well, it looked all right. Are you sure the house is empty? Oh, yes. 
How do you know? I asked. Don't you think so? Think what? About what? That love would only get in the way? In the way of what? In the way of our little retreat. Is that what it is? I made my retreat to this house a long time ago. Then a week ago, you made yours. I didn't know I was making a retreat. You didn't think it's only the religious who make retreats, did you? Well, I never really thought about it. Many people make retreats, though they don't always call them that. Alcohol is a retreat. Really? Alcoholism is a permanent retreat. Drugs are a retreat. Addiction is a permanent retreat. A breakdown is a retreat. Insanity is a permanent retreat. And, of course, the last, the drastic, and the really permanent retreat is suicide. Aren't we getting a little morbid? Oh, what a touchy man you are. Are you afraid to talk about serious things like love and loss and death? No, I'm not afraid. I just don't want to spoil... spoil the retreat. Would you like to make it permanent? That would mean becoming a hermit. Would you like to be a hermit? Well, no, no. But I, I wouldn't be. Not as long as you're here. But I shan't always be here. Why not? Why won't you? Did I ever say I would? Not in so many words, but... Uh, I assumed, I, I took it for granted. That was but... very foolish of you. Yes, I suppose it was. Uh, well, uh, if, if you're planning on leaving... Eventually. Well, then, I might as well plan on it, too. I think you should. Actually, I... I might as well leave right now. If you like. You don't care? I don't care. No. It doesn't open. Try harder. It's no good. I can't. Let me open it for you. If you don't mind. Not in the least. Well, think of that. Imagine. I can't open it either. And that means... That means that I don't want to leave any more than you do. And you'll stay? As long as I do? You'd like that? Very much. No, my dear. It's impossible. Why is it impossible? Because we are becoming too much like lovers. Well, we nearly had a quarrel just now. Do you realize that? Just like real lovers. Would that be so awful? You don't know how awful. No. I can't open the door now. But tomorrow... You won't want to open it tomorrow any more than you do now. Oh, yes, yes. Because tomorrow I shall put on the white muslin dress with the lavender ribbons and the blue rose... And I shall wash and dress my hair. And when he gallops up the road, he will see me standing in the window. He will look up at me and smile with joy. And he will wave to me and know that his long waiting is over. And I shall open the door and go out to him. Jack, this is Mona. Any word from Dave? Not from him, no. But a man named Gregory Cape called me. He says our car is parked in front of an old deserted house down the road from where he lives. Been there for a week, he says. That's exactly how long David's been gone. Oh, well, how does he know it's your car? He checked out the license plate. Now, where is this old deserted house? About 200 miles from here, outside a little town called Marathon. I didn't tell him about David. He thinks the car was stolen and abandoned. I, I let it go at that. Yeah, it probably is. That's my guess. I intend to find out. And that's why I called you. I want to borrow your car. Oh, sure. I'll drive up there tomorrow. 
It's too late to go now. You want me to bring the car over to your house? If you don't mind. Want me to drive up to this place with you? I know how to get there. Mr. Kate told me in detail. Hey, I just as soon, you know. I... Uh, I don't want you to, Jack. I don't think David's in the mood to face you right now. I guess not. Actually... I might as well tell you now, if you'll just let me use your car tomorrow, then I I don't want to have anything more to do with you. You understand? I understand. Aren't you coming downstairs? Soon. Yes, soon. I'm so afraid of losing you. Sometimes I think I have, or that I never really found you. Can you hear me? I'm busy. Doing what? You see. Well, not... You're not. Oh, not yet. Here I am. You may look... Well, what do you think? Do you like it from now? Be honest. Tell me... Do you like the way I look? Yes. You really mean it? Oh, yes. I'm sorry it took so long. But this is a very elaborate dress. And my hair is so difficult to handle. That's the dress, the white muslin with the lavender ribbons. Where's the blue rose? It was so faded and a little crushed. I don't think he'll notice that it's missing if he remembers that it was ever there. No man could ever forget you in that dress. It is pretty, isn't it? And it's becoming, isn't it? It suits me, don't you think? You're going to stand in the window, aren't you? In that dress. Of course I am. I told you I would when I thought he'd suffered enough. He'll be riding by very soon now. Yes, any minute. What kind of pose? Shall I assume? Oh, perhaps a hand to one cheek. Would that be good? Come away from that window. Or would it be better if I were just full face with my arms at my side? Very simple, very affected. Come away Don't from that. Don't touch me. Don't you dare touch me. You can say that after everything. That is that over. Been... It's over. Oh, I think you've mussed my hair. Well, it can't be helped. I've always told you my retreat wasn't permanent. That the day would come... But not today. Why not? I... I... I think I hear him. Oh, yes, yes, it is. How do I look? Well, no matter, it's too late to think about that now. Oh, hear how fast he gallops. He was always like that. Always at a hard gallop on these back country roads. Yes, he is. There he is. No. No. No, wait. Wait. Didn't he see me? Oh, that's impossible. He must have seen me. Why did he go on past? He didn't even look up. He never slowed his horse. He never even... Oh, no. Oh, no, it can't be that he doesn't care. It can't be that. Can it? Tell me. Can it be that? Can it be... But he doesn't care. To err is human. We all know that only too well. But uh, is it really so divine to forgive? Especially when the one who is forgiven shows no appreciation of our forgiveness. Perhaps never wanted it. Never needed it. And is in no mood to accept it. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. David Trent, the man who ran away has spent the past week in a strange house with a woman he has come to know intimately. Who, in 
our last act, stood at one of the front windows of the old house, listening to the sound of hoofbeats approaching. Here he is. No! Didn't he see me? He must have seen me. Why did he go on past? He didn't even look up. Oh, wait. Wait. What are you doing? I have to call him back. It can't be that he doesn't care. Oh, what's the matter with this door? Can't you open it? Of course I can. Why doesn't it open? You said to me the day I got here, you don't want it to open. That's why. Mrs. Trent? Yes. Uh, you're Mr. Cape. Mr. Gregory Cape. Come in. Thank you. Do you have any trouble getting here? Some. Well, we're a little off the beaten track here. It was very kind of you to call me about my husband. Uh, about his car. He didn't come with you? Uh, no. Oh, I might as well tell you, Mr. Cape. My husband left home a week ago. I haven't heard from him since. I, uh, I, I think there's a, a good possibility he's hidden himself away in that house. I hope not. Why? Is there something, is there anything dangerous? Oh, no, 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 not dangerous. Just a big, empty house with a sad history. You own the house, you told me. Yes, I wish I didn't. The house belonged to my grandfather. He built it at the turn of the century for a beautiful young woman. For a few years, the house was full of laughter and music and dancing, and then one day... Yes? Oh, it was a trifling affair. My grandfather was a lusty young man in the year 1901. There was a pretty parlor maid, and my grandfather was not true to misquote Shakespeare slightly. He gave dalliance too much rain. Well, the beautiful young girl he married drove him from the house. The laughter and the music and the dancing went on, but without him. It went on for a long time. It became wilder and more abandoned. The neighbors protested. They took steps to force her out of the house. When that happened, the music and the dancing stopped quite suddenly. There were not more guests. But she stayed on? She stayed on. First of every month, cases of liquor were delivered to the house. The laughter within was no longer merry or gay. It was hysterical and spiteful. And then that stopped, too. She died. Oh, no. Oh, no. It was about that time that cocaine was discovered. By Freud, actually. Though few people remember that. As an anesthetic for operations on the eye, Freud himself was addicted, I believe, for a short time. And the lovely lady in the house was also addicted for a very long time. Oh, how unhappy she must have been, your grandmother. My grandmother? Oh, no, Mrs. Trent. I am the grandson of the parlor maid. <laughs> too ugly. Is that why he didn't stop? Have I grown old and hideous? No. That can happen, you know. A woman doesn't always realize what time is doing to her. She thinks she's always 18. Is that what's happened to me? No, no, believe me. My pretty dress? Has it turned yellow? Have the ribbons faded? It's still very pretty, and so are you. Do you mean that? With all my heart. I think you should go upstairs and take off your dress and bathe yourself. I could do that, I suppose. And then lie down upon your bed and sleep for a while. Should I do that? <laughs> Didn't you tell me that sleep is the safest retreat of all? I did say that, didn't I? You know, I think you were right about the door. It wouldn't open because I didn't really want it to open. Not really. Come in, 
if you want to. I can't open the door, but come in if you like. Hello, David. Mona. Hello. How are you? I'm well. Are you? Not very. Oh, I'm sorry. David, will you come home with me? Well, now, I I don't know about that. You've been away so long. Has it been so long? For me, it has. How, how did you find me? The man who owns this house saw the car out front and took down the license number. He called me. David, please forgive me. Forgive you? Is that what you want me to do? I know it can't happen right away. It might take years and years. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care if it takes forever. I just want you home where I can take care of you, where we can live together and, and try to be happy again. David? Listen. He's come back. Who? He's come back to be forgiven. His days of suffering are over. Listen. What was that? Oh. She couldn't. She, she couldn't. It was a shot, wasn't it? Oh, I never thought. It sounded as though it came from this house. David. There's a man outside lying on the ground. The door opened. Oh, there he is. There's his horse. See the kid. Oh. It's Mr. Cape. What, what, what in the name? What happened? We heard a shot. We thought you'd been shot. No, no, no. My horse stumbled and I, I, I went off. That's all that happened. I, I must have blacked out. But you're not hurt? Well, you can see I'm not hurt. Well, it's this house. It's this cursed house. I should never have ridden down here, but I was concerned about you, Mrs. Trent. Ow. Oh. Well, at least I see you found your husband. Yes. Yes, this is David. Mr. Cave. Mm. You do a lot of riding, don't you? On horseback? Every day. The same horse every day? Yes. Have you ever, Mr. Cave, known your horse to stumble on flat ground moving at a walk? A slow walk, Mr. Cave? <laughs> Are you here? It's only me. Don't be afraid. Are you here? Is that you? Yes. I'll come down. I'll wait. Have you come to make another retreat? No. No? Then why? I came to tell you that I bought this house. Oh? Why have you done that? I wanted to be sure that you'd always have a place to live. That was very kind of you. Well, there was another reason. You've gone back to the woman who betrayed you. Am I right? You're right. And you've forgiven her. I'm getting back my self-respect. You told me, you know, that a little affair is, well, just a little affair. But the consequences to the the third party, the one left out, the one made to feel like an outsider, well, that they are very severe, as you well know. As I well know. You did shoot him, didn't you? Oh, yes. I thought so. I saw him fall, and a great burden was lifted from my heart. But you stay on here? Where would I go? Oh, I can't say I don't miss him. Miss the sound of his horse's hoofbeats pounding up the road. Yes, I miss that. The days seem long without that. Still, what else could I do? What could I do but kill him? 
It must have seemed like the only thing. You were going to tell me the other reason why you bought this house. You said you bought it for me. But there was another reason. Yes. I bought it for myself. To live here? No. At least, not all the time. Uh Uh-huh. I see. Just for the times when I need to run away. To make a retreat. That was very wise of you. And you know, don't you, that whenever you decide to run away, I shall always be here. I know. Thank you for coming. Oh, thank you for being here. (laughs) I wonder if the door will open for me. Try it. You see? Yes. Come back. Soon. The rest of us must make our retreats from life and its harshness the best way we can. It is very nice if you can take a vacation in some far-off place. It is also nice to shut oneself in one's room and read old books. But only David Trent knows a house where he is perpetually welcome. A house occupied by a certain woman of indeterminate age. I'll be back shortly. reality. And I myself endorse all of it. Reality is the safest place to live in. But we have to admit that not all of us are strong enough to live with reality day in, day out. We all must run away from time to time to build up our strength. The thing is, we must always know the way back. For us, The door must always open. Our cast included Mercedes McCambridge, Robert Dryden, Martha Greenhouse, and William Redfield. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Look what I found. An Indian arrowhead among the rocks. Well, that's unusual. It is a design on it. Here, let me rub off more of the moss. It's heavily encrusted. It's been here for hundreds of years. Good. Drums. Think about drums. Indian drums. Hear them? Drums. What are you talking about? I don't hear anything. Uh, here. Any idea what this design means, Colonel? Well, they're gone. They're gone. What? You didn't hear the Indian drums? No. When you rubbed the arrowhead, I distinctly heard drums. When you handed it to me, the drums stopped. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Time Magazine. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>